Welcome to today's live stream. I'm super excited to welcome you here today. Before we get started and get into the really for real live, this is obviously a pre-recorded video where I can tell you a couple things and then we can get started. So uh, honestly, what I'm doing is buying myself time to turn the camera on and make sure that everything sounds good. But uh, while we do that, while we wait for myself, let's go ahead and comment below. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Maybe let's start with your name and where you're watching from. And then also I'd love to hear about uh, maybe the latest project you're working on or your favorite software. So if you can post a link below, go ahead and post a link to your portfolio. We'd love to check it out and see what you're up to. And maybe even let us know what your favorite uh, software is or maybe your favorite subject. Do you like web design or print design or making t-shirts or logos or branding? I don't know. Go ahead and comment below and let us know. We'd love to check it out. And then also, if you'd love to see what I'm up to, you can check out my work at DerekMitchell.com. You can see some YouTube videos at YouTube.com slash Derek Mitchell. And then also live streaming at Behance.net slash Mitchell's Garage. So you can check me out there. And then did I say Instagram? I don't know if I said Instagram yet or not. Instagram.com slash D Mitchell Design. So hopefully there's links and buttons and stuff here right there. Uh, anyway. All right, guys, we're about to dive into some really cool stuff. Uh, feel free to comment in the thread and I'd love to, again, see what you're up to and I'll try and answer your questions as we get going, but let's go ahead and dive in. Today's video is sponsored by the Graphic Design Bootcamp. If you're looking at becoming a graphic designer and you want to learn more about Photoshop, Illustrator, and InDesign, creating real world projects that clients would actually pay you for, for things like logos, business cards, letterhead, and much more, check out the link below for more information and a deep discount to get started today. Today's video is sponsored by the Graphic Design Bootcamp. If you're looking at becoming a graphic designer and you want to learn more about Photoshop, Illustrator, and InDesign, creating real world projects that clients would actually pay you for, for things like logos, business cards, letterhead, and much more, check out the link below for more information and a deep discount to get started today.
All right, you guys, what's going on? Welcome to today's live. Super pumped to be here. Uh, just quick check. Hopefully you can hear me okay. If you can hear me, post something in the comments, say hello. Got a very fun show for us today. I have my my good friend, special guest, Mr. Paul Gowan here. What's up, man? Thanks for joining hey, hey. us today. Uh, dude, so, so pumped. We got a lot to talk about today. A lot of good things. Lots of fun, fun topics. How you been? Yeah, and happy new year. Yeah. That happened, right? We're four days in already. What's up, Facebook user? Hey, be sure to uh, either tell us what your name is or give Ecam Live permission in your right above the feed, so that way we can see who you are. Somewhere, like yeah, right up there. somewhere. So, yeah, dude, twenty twenty one. That happened fast, and it kind of didn't either. I, did. I mean, like, right between COVID and quarantine and all the other chaos. On the one hand, it's like feels like an eternity, and on the other hand, I was like, yeah crap that went fast and then you blinked and covid standard time had march turn into new year's eve <laughs> right oh my gosh no great no, <laughs> no joke crazy well we've got some fun stuff today you and i were talking about setting up our conditions for success talking about going into yeah. 2021 strong uh for most of my audience is either a freelancer or a business owner or a graphic designer somewhere in there and yeah. how do we how do we set up 2021 for our success and just hit the ground running is what we're talking about today. I love I love questions like this because I love what you do and what your students do with this very creative process of bringing that that artistry that humanity has known for thousands, tens of thousands, maybe even hundreds of thousands of years. And then you bring that artistry together with a computer. <laughs> <laughs> and I just I think that's amazing. Is, is my feed cutting out again? Uh, you know, you looked really sharp and crispy a second ago and, and you're getting a little grainy, but hey, as long as the audio doesn't drop on us yeah. this time and then the, the live feed end, right. I'll be happy. That's been the last three times, yeah. uh, but I think we're good. I made some changes. Uh, we're about to find out. We're about to find out. Yeah. I'm going to change how this is capturing on my end. Uh, Cause I don't want some grainy, goofy looking picture to distract people. Uh, and because I'm dealing with professional graphic artists, they, they the, pay attention to stuff like this. <laughs> the funny part is I was, I was about to compliment you on how good your camera looked this time. Cause I know you're, I know. you're looking at buying a new camera here soon. And then it just, gosh, I don't know. You, you yeah. told me go for the new audio first, but you, you know, we should try, <laughs> we should try doing a zoom call, uh, and see if the tech helps us out broadcasting via zoom yeah. versus this, uh, whatever. It's all, good. it's all good. It's all good. A um, lot of people, yeah. when they, they enter the new year, they take a look at where they are and where they want to be. And in traditional frameworks, we talk about that as setting goals or setting resolutions or swearing that I'll never drink that much again because that person I kissed at midnight. <laughs> Is this, are you speaking from experience, Paul? <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Oh no. So. When we, when we take that view rooted in passion, it's, uh, it, it's guaranteed to, to flame out. And the way I like to think about this, cause I like to think in metaphors, I gotta have stuff simple enough that I can wrap my brain around it. Uh, I think about like where I'm at is being on one bank of a river. And I think about where I want to be as the opposite bank of the river. And there stands in between where I am and where I want to be, this river. And if I have passion, and there's going to be a lot of people out there that are like, follow your passion, trust your passion, trust your gut, just jump in. Well, sometimes that can kill you. Like, you don't know what's going on with the current uh, up in your neck of the woods. You jump into a river this time of year. <laughs> what, you've got a couple minutes to get back out before you yeah, really? die from hypothermia. No <laughs> so I like to think more about, well, how can you create a, a bridge to get to that other side? And in like newcomer innovation, like I think about like when I was a child, I thought if I could just get enough rocks and just chuck them into the river, then I can slowly create a, a dam, like a, a, a platform, a bank of rocks for how to cross that river. Well, that's the, that's the zest of youth, right? 
it's, I don't, didn't understand like the current builds up, the water pressure goes, and then it just kind of sweeps away your progress. And a lot of people face that me too with habit creation and you go off half cocked and you've got some sort of plan that could be compared to being like a kid and just chucking those rocks. You know, you're not going to just jump in. It's too deep to get across. So you're going to just like chuck rocks and attempt to make this path to go reach the other side, to go achieve your goals, to go achieve that new year's resolution. But when you take time and you say, you know what, if I can look around and maybe there's a place that's a little bit narrower within the river, maybe there's a place where it's a little bit shallower, or maybe the water's a little bit calmer, or you know what, I recognize that this is a regular place that I want to go to. I want to be able to build a bridge. And when you have that, like that tempered approach, like you would temper steel. When you temper steel, you heat it up and cool it down and it makes it stronger. Talk about something that heats you up, like the crucible of COVID in 2020. That burned away a lot of impurities. Right. So when right. you take this tempered approach to goal setting, then you can create this bridge that can help you be more successful. And we were talking about how setting systems of success is something that that you teach within graphics design because of the, the, the windows and talk tell me give me the graphic design lingua like within photoshop and and premiere pro and all of the adobe oh, Cloud oh, that you oh use. you're talking about okay so we call them like workspaces so it, yes. you can you can set up whether you're working for photography workflow or a graphic design workflow or a web design workflow and depending on what you choose your all of your tools will move around to where you only see what you need in the moment you don't see because you know photoshop especially has has so much, I, I've been doing this for over 20 years and I don't even know all of the windows in Photoshop. So there's there's a lot of extra there that you just don't need. And so by rearranging your workspace, right. you can streamline and really focus on whatever, you know, whatever task is at hand without getting uh, basically just bogged down by all of the excess, all of the noise, right? So that, that's so true. And I love what you said about focus because for thousands of years, there did not exist this word that is a complete fantasy, multitasking. No, yeah. if, you, if you're if you gonna multitask, like jugglers can do that, but they're not multitasking, they're juggling. They're dividing their momentary pieces of attention on what next ball to catch or chainsaw or flaming torch. That's not multitasking, that's parsing your attention and focus and bringing it so momentarily and so rapidly that most mere mortals are not going to start chucking around chainsaws or axes or yeah. flaming torches. That makes me think of the word uh, priorities, which doesn't work because the word, right? Priority, the prior thing, the one thing, like it stems from the one thing. You can't have multiple one things. Right. Yeah. We've anyway. kind of bastardized that term using like grammar, grammar trickery. Like, yeah priority. So mm -hmm. I, I was thinking about that today as I was, uh, between our, our talk and then in this live, I went and got cleaned up and everything. And, uh, I was thinking about how can I bring more focus to each task that I'm doing instead of thinking about multitasking, I'm going to intentionally talk about single tasking. And when you focus on single tasking, and then you do things like inside the Adobe programs of setting up the boards for your particular preference to set you up for success because you're unique. Then that's part of what can set up the, the, the systems of success. And this is especially convoluted right now in, in, the, in the land of Instagram and Facebook and social media of, hey, here's five quick tricks that I use to go from uh, zero to $10 million in only six months, click down below and you're sign like, me up, sign me up. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think both of us have been hooked by some of that garbage before, right? <laughs> maybe a little bit. I, uh, maybe a little bit. I want to point out too, this is funny. I'm gonna have to change my intro speaking of all of this. So I'm always like, Hey, join me in Facebook and you know, follow me on Instagram. Uh, right. well, I recently deleted both of those apps off my phone actually after reevaluating their privacy policy. So this will be an yeah. interesting 2021. And 
I encourage you guys, if you're watching this, <laughs> ironically from Facebook, uh, right, right. I, you know, like here's the deal. I didn't realize how much I was dependent on like when I'd sit down swiping up and, you know, on your, on your phone or at least on an iPhone, I'm sure Androids do it too, to some capacity. It has your suggested top apps. The ones that you, you know, when I open it up, I can see what my top eight apps are that I open all the time. Uh, well, uh, number one frequently was Instagram. And so <laughs> now that that's not there, that button doesn't even exist on my phone for me to just sit down and just like mindlessly trance out a few things have happened. Actually, the one, the obvious is this time saved. Like I'm not trolling through social media as I'm actually contributing. Now I'm creating content, but I'm not consuming content. Uh, that was a positive. The other massive positive, I didn't realize how much I was getting worn out from current news and from all kinds of other things that not that I, not that I want to be ignorant and, you know, ignorance is bliss, but there's a lot that, that, that was beyond me needing to care about for that day to be able to serve at a higher level, to be able to produce for my clients. And so removing those from my phone is going to be a game changer for me for 2021. Uh, I'm working through, for those of you who are maybe concerned as my students, what are we going to do? coming into, you know, the Facebook group that's brought us all together. We've got over 17,000 people there right now, uh, which is still live, uh, still up. Uh, but I'm working on building new communities and different ways for us to stay in touch. So if you want to stay in touch and keep in the know on that, be sure to go to my website at derekmitchell.com and you can, uh, there's a little subscription button to join my mail list. Just scroll to the bottom of the page. You can jump right in and uh, sign up for my newsletter. And that way you can know when we go live, you can be able to stay in touch when I get this new community set up. But for me, that's a real tangible way that I've been able to just go, go from a mindless yeah. scrolling to actually something tangible that I've done for 2021 to set that up for success and to just go right. full tilt into this thing. So right. anyway, it, I went on a rant there, but... Well, going back to the juggling metaphor, can you imagine like juggling all of those things and then being like, actually, I really just need to go check Instagram real quick. Oh, and that's what I would do, right? Like, I don't know that's how what we were doing. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Facebook user, thank you for doing these lives. You are welcome and glad to have you here. Uh, you guys make sure you comment in the chat where you're watching from, how we can help you, what you're, what you're doing. Promote yourselves. We'd love to see you guys yeah. post your links to your websites. Uh, Self-promotion is totally okay here. We love to see what you've got going on. Dustin, love what's it. going on? Is that Dustin Mack? Uh, good to see you, man. It's been a while. If that's Dustin. Yeah, let's do the world roll call too. And uh, where yeah. are you tuning in from? Yeah. We really love on on Moto Mondays here. To yeah, see we didn't how even. Countries were able to serve and be able to help out. Yeah. So Paul and I have decided to theme this. We're going live every Monday at noon, uh, Mountain Standard. And we didn't even, I need a new intro for these lives because we're going, we're going off the, uh, the topic of moto Monday. Cause it sounded yeah. good. It was Paul's idea, but motivation, right? Keeping us all focused, keeping us, uh, motivated, especially as creatives who crave that human right. interaction. But most of the time, our best work is by ourselves with the lights off huddling over a computer. Right. And so trying to right. find ways to stay motivated and stay refreshed, especially, man, I used to love walking through the stores and just looking at all the packaging, uh, whether it was at the sports stores or especially alcohol packaging, because they have so much money that their packaging is always amazing. And so right. I'd always look at all those packaging ideas, uh, just getting ideas, being out in the world. And, and now that we're, you know, kind of stuck in some ways, it's opening up a little bit, but, um, Anyway, it's just one of those things where this has been so valuable and I, and I love this, yeah. this Moto Monday thing. Yeah. So shout out to Dustin from Wisconsin. Uh, now, are you from Wisconsin or Wisconsin? Because oh there's kind of like two major flavors <laughs> of Wisconsinites there. Uh, <laughs> right? I'm not sure how you're going to spell that to yeah. clarify that, Dustin, but I am I am very curious. Yeah. You know, and, and I love what you're talking about with turning off the lights and going head down and things like your phone, things like believing that you can multitask, it's like setting up a little really bright strobe light in the corner. That oh, it's, right. it, it's either going to be super distracting yeah. or give you a seizure. Like either way, it's not <laughs> maybe both. Yeah. Or, you know, right. right, right, right. So in that, in that discipline, Oh, there's the D word. We dropped it. Yes. Yes. Artists require discipline. Artists have boundaries to their canvas. I don't think Whether so. Going to this like is not possible. That's not how it works, Paul. Right? Right? <laughs> well, and both of us are musicians. 
and uh, we we were able to to jam out a little bit. You on the guitar, you're like, oh, I haven't played for very long, and then you're just like ripping out like. I don't know. You probably could have played some Van Halen just at the drop of a hat. Uh, and here I am just on my ukulele doing my best to scrub some chords. Well, chug, yeah, but chug, the ukulele is not chug. like your instrument, your trained instrument. You're like a classically trained saxophone. Is that is that yeah, like an oxymoron? Classical while. saxophone? Is that? We had this no, conversation. It, yeah, like the, the violinists right. would be upset with that, uh, yeah, like the traditional yeah. orchestral people. But there's like the, <laughs> the classical side of the saxophone. And then there's the stuff that a lot of people just love, yeah. which is jazz and rock and how do you improvise. And even in that place of creative improvisation, in that creative momentary decisions of how can you bring your art into the world to to make somebody's day to cheer them up, to share this piece of your soul with them. Even in that place of improvisation within music, there are chord changes that guide that soloist's note selection or a really good ensemble. Look, if I start playing a certain rhythm, like you, you got some new mute. Oh man. Oh, I see you. I see you. Yeah, Keep going, man. Go. I think we're still all here. Right, all right. We've, we've got, yeah, we've got it, it glitches really and we get uh, super nervous because it keeps dropping out on us. I know. I know. <gasps> uh, we, you, you have a really good rhythm section where part of what you are doing then starts showing up within the uh, rhythm section and the guitar or the piano or whatever. Then that, that, that creates like this amazing art and yeah. it's still based on we are going to go this fast. One, structure. two, yep. a one, two, three, four. Like that pulse, that tempo, that meter creates the structure for that artistic expression. And we don't really talk about that. We just talk about like, I'm an artist. I do things as they come to me. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, Sarah Peterson will appreciate that. Sarah and I go way back. We used to work together. Thanks for joining in, Sarah. I got to say hi to her. Yeah. Um, She'll appreciate that one. I, I also, I, so we have Moto Monday. Maybe we need like Jazzy Tuesday or something where we just go live on Twitch and just like do, do the, oh, I forget the category name, but just the live music, just hang out. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah maybe I'll that. get, <laughs> I don't know. Like I'll, I'll have to get like I, my, my ukulele is built to have a pickup. So, what? uh, well I'm doing, I'm doing take command Tuesday. Have I told you about that? You did. Yeah, okay, so it can't be Jazzy Tuesday. It's got to be like, you know. I don't know, like something Wednesday. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. We'll have to think about Comments that. Comments below. All right. But if you're watching, <laughs> um, Dustin, thank you, Wisconsin. So uh, you, you, you say it like most of the rest of the country. You probably still say pop. Uh, I had to learn how to say soda as I soda. left Montana and went around the world. Like there's a little pocket of people that say pop, unless you're from Texas and then everything's a Coke. Uh, I feel like growing know. up we said pop, but I grew oh, up yeah. in Spokane in Washington. So I'm trying to think. <laughs> did I say whimsical. what? Whimsical. <laughs> That'll work. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm looking outside now, and the mountains are everything socked in. But it looks like we might be getting some snow headed this way. That'd be fun. We need to get a mountain cam from your. I know. Your That's what I was thinking. Yeah, I can. I can rig that up here. Next. Next call. Yeah. Uh, let us know what it is that you're working on. Let us know the, the reason why we've come together uh, is to have an aspect of, of speaking to technology, but from more of like a, a strategic flow perspective, not uh, here's the shortcut key, here's how you do the gradient fills. I, and, and that's about the extent of my knowledge on those platforms. Drop shadows, um, definitely boss. <laughs> oh, and, until I found the effects button. And then I'm yeah. like, I'll take all of you up. Yeah, uh, but we also wanted to provide a space to to speak to like the human condition of you coming and advancing yourself as a as a business person within the graphic design industry. So please put the uh, wise guy uh, Wednesday. Wise guy with the three stooges. We, <laughs> that means we have to get Jenna. <laughs> You're right. It's more like it's more like the circus, you know. She's uh, oh. right, the three the three ring leader, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
the yeah. remaster. Yeah, Ring remaster. Mistress. Hey, I should ask Sarah if she's still here. Uh, so she's a project manager also. Oh, yeah, yeah. Or at least I'm assuming still. I don't know. Uh, but I'm curious how she uh, cracks the whip for all the creatives in the office. Keep it on yeah. the deliverables. Yeah. Well, and, and this is something that we've talked about that I'm really focused on this year is lead people, manage systems. Mm, uh, that's good. In the, in the military career that I had, it was like, are you a leader or are you a manager? And it was like, manager was like a bad word. Oh. Uh, and it was like, you had to be a leader. Yeah. No, no. There is a place to do both. You understand from the technical experts, like, what their unique contributions can be. And that leader understands how to link them together in a chain of excellence. Yep. To do that requires you to be aware of the human condition and ensure that your people, your team have the knowledge, the skills, the ability, the environment, those, those conditions for success. And part of that leadership is holding people accountable to that standard, to the system. You encourage innovation, but then at a certain point, you you slap the table and you say, we are on a, 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 an agreement that this is the system yeah. because this way we can measure it. Sarah says systems look, is her look. favorite word. Oh, Sarah's like I want to know. So she says that she's a program manager. What's the difference between a program manager and a project manager? That seems like. Great question. I mean, yeah. I'm still new to the civilian sector. I was a Marine for 15 years and uh, I'm coming up on six years as a veteran. Uh, well, I, I don't know. I think they might be uh, fairly interchangeable. I, I, I'd say, Sarah, let us know what's the difference between the yeah. programs and the projects. It's probably, it's probably at least $20,000 in annual salary, right? There's got to be a difference there, right? I, don't know. <laughs> I know there's like the project management institute that does the certifications. It's not the yeah. program manager institute. I, yeah. I don't know. So, uh, it might so be like before, soda and pop. <laughs> right? Yeah. So, Paul, when, before we jumped on the call, we had talked about like the one thing for the year because we're trying to like brainstorm what we want to talk about today. And that's where you came yeah. up with the setting conditions for success. So kind of coming back into yeah. the idea of as a designer, right. y you know, we can set our tool panels to be whatever we want them to be for our flow. So, right. so what does right. that translate for you? Like the one thing this year, setting conditions for success, um, we, you talked about confidence with trust, you know, things like that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So with, with setting conditions for success, you, you take a look at, well, what are those preferences or what are those lessons learned that, you know, uh, create an unlevel playing field. Like it, it's, you're going to succeed if you do these things. And sometimes you start with the opposite you know you're going to fail, you know you're gonna get distracted, you know you're gonna miss your deadline if you pick up Instagram before noon, uh, play video games before the end of the work day. Uh, one of the things that I took a look at was uh, the negative effects of my overconsumption of caffeine was having on me. Um, so I just pulled the plug. I'm, I've been caffeine free now for a little over two weeks. I know, right? That's the running joke. Like the energy you have, this is, this is non-caffeinated. Yeah. Right? Yeah. This is decaf. Yeah. Cause I had a couple of cups of decaf this morning. Cause I got some fancy decaf. Cause I do, I was getting the fancy coffee and really like learning how to discover the notes of the, the, the strawberry. Oh my gosh. Accents. Yeah. Yeah. Did you buy I, a I scale? Kind of Did you buy a scale and like the grinder to get it just the right, the right grind for it? No. It's a, oh it's my a gosh. Mill. To yeah. like do it right, you got to have a mill and not a grinder. Um, but that, that's on the horizon. <laughs> so when you take a look at how to set the conditions for success, I like to do things in this order every time. Is there a way to like make something pop? Do you have that effect or do you have like the applause button? Oh, like, oh, maybe. Yeah. I this maybe deleted that button. Every time. Oh, I did. If and it was spectacular, it. but I, I don't. I'm sorry. Okay. If you do this in this order, every time you're going to develop a proficiency to set the conditions for success in anything that you're going after, whether it's a business project, whether it's a relationship, whether it's negotiating a, a salary or a wage or a project fee. If you do these three things in this order, every time 
you are setting the conditions for success. So I first look at what am I doing in my life? And I, I look at what am I doing for my rest, my activity, my nutrition, and my hydration. And that hydration piece is where uh, a couple of weeks ago, I'm like, I have a huge place that I can improve. Um, because I was drinking so much coffee, that was affecting my level of activity. And it was destroying my ability to rest. Uh, so I go through this and I'm saying this, not as that, that cross-legged, uh, white robed guru on top of some mountain that's telling what you should do with your life. I'm like, here, if you want to be successful, here's some of the things that I've studied. Here's some of the things that I do. Here's some of the things that work for my clients, uh, that invest thousands of dollars in, in me curating this knowledge, do this. So take a look at what you're doing for yourself first. Yes, you creatives that love to just, I want to take care of other people first. And I want to, I want to make sure that they're taken care of. This is especially for you because if you continue to give and give and give and give without taking that time to replenish, to restore, to recharge, then you will be attempting to give from an empty cup. And I like yeah. to think of, like I told you metaphors, like the, the, the office jerk that I didn't use the last of the coffee. Okay. Okay. Bob, there was like two drops in there that <laughs> constitutes the rest of it. And you put it back on the burner and carrots are not built to be heated like that with nothing in them. So they break. That sounds like a certain family member who shall rename nameless to protect the guilty who would like eat the rest of whatever it was cake or leftovers or whatever. And put like, not only like put the container back in the fridge, but like leave the fork in there too. Buddy, right. If that, would, like, if that family member <laughs> happens to be pregnant, I'm going to, I'm going to, it's you not, it's not off. Jen. It's not Jen. Okay. Okay. It, it, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, we're, okay. we're going to, we're not going to, it's not, <laughs> it's, like, it's not somebody in my, yeah, I know. Yeah. We're just going to leave it at that. Uh, okay. Okay. Jeez. <laughs> so you take care of yourself first and that might feel selfish initially. Uh, it's not. It's self-centered like when you're taking time to center yourself and make sure that you are going through what you need to do for rest and going through activity and thinking about the food that you're eating and thinking about what kind of water or liquid you're putting in your body and how much and how often um, that is centering yourself. Yeah. And think about that. When you do that, then you can bring the best of who you are and share that with other people. And that leads us to the second place, your relationships. So you focus on taking care of yourself so you can bring the best of who you are into your relationships. Uh, and, and then you take a look at, well, how do I set the conditions to succeed in this relationship? If it's professionally, if it's personally, it's, if it's with your faith community, if it's with your neighbors who are launching mortars uh, on New Year's until three in the morning. Uh, oh, yeah. Sorry, bro. That, <laughs> About that. that oh. I mean, I yeah, love Montana. I love that we blow stuff up, but our direct neighbors were launching like professional grade mortars that were exploding like 50 feet out from our window, right outside my kid's window. It was no great. Yeah. It was, it was no, no bueno, no great. No bueno. Uh, okay. So real quick though, going back to taking care of yourself, this is a really, yeah. um, I don't want to say this. This is a topic that I think will resonate with a lot of my students because I go through this a lot and, and, and the, the, the hang up is okay. As a freelancer, if I'm not working, I'm not making money. If I don't finish a project, I don't get paid. So, and, and also we all like, we need money to survive. And usually like back in the day before Jen and I planned better financially, like there was never enough money for the month. Right. And so you get to right, this point right. in your career where, uh, you work always, because if I finish this tonight, I can build a client tomorrow, you know, and you're on this treadmill of, uh, not taking care of yourself because, you, you need to be what I call AIS, which is ass in seat working, <laughs> like, right, right, you know, right. and, and, and that is one of the biggest struggles is taking care of yourself. Uh, so I'm curious what, I mean, we kind of talked about this a little bit, but what, what advice would you give to the creative? Who's a freelancer? Who's stuck on that treadmill of, I have to work. I have to, I have to make money and, and I don't have time that must, that would be really nice, but I don't have time to, to spend an hour and a half, you know, by the time I, go work out or go for a walk or do whatever, come get cleaned up and get back into work. I don't have an hour to do that. Like what would be your advice for that? Great question. Keep this as a two up though. Uh, <laughs> Cause you can feel 
probably what's getting ready to happen. In our conversations, what has been some of the biggest things that have stood out to you as you've expressed to me, Paul, uh, it's like two positive magnets. And no matter what I do, I cannot remain seated. I'm just like repelled and it's time to go check out the kids and it's time to go crush boxes and it's time to go to Costco. Like <laughs> what are some of those things that we've talked through that have helped you? Like, because that's, that's been part of our yeah. conversation. Yeah. Uh, can I, can I just like drop the ping pong back to you there? <laughs> yeah. Right. Way to go. Yeah. Uh, as far as crushing boxes, that didn't happen. So like the rest of the world, probably, uh, this Christmas slash life has transferred over to ordering from somewhere online. So we've got a garage full of boxes that need broke down and hauled off somewhere. Uh, maybe I'll set them on fire in my backyard. Cause I can do that right next to the neighbors. So that's where I was going with it. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, we'll wait till the smoke's blowing in the right direction. Did I say that aloud? Oh my goodness. Yeah. Uh, you're it's such a bad influence fine. on me. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, all right. So as far as what you, you know, the, the biggest takeaways I think for me, doesn't it really translate towards, well, just make time for yourself and go work out. It's more so we talked about the breathing exercises and some of the other things that, that kind right. of calm that stress and, reduce that feeling where you just get so worked up and you just get so spun up, you know, taking a minute yeah, to, so to, to breathe at the very least, like take a breath. Like, yes, breathing yeah. is automatic. Yes. It's a survival thing, but it's also something you can control. And mm -hmm. so that's been something that I've learned a lot from you. Uh, and then also just realizing that you need that physical, like, especially if you're getting wound up or stressed about something like you, your body needs that release of moving taking action, doing something versus just sitting there and spinning out. Um, so true. Yeah. You know, those, the breathing techniques for me is what's actively currently been the biggest immediate uh, help that. And I built the gym in my garage, which has been awesome to try to make that a regular thing. So bringing this full circle back to yourself and setting yeah. conditions for success. Yes. We can set up yeah, our yeah. tools in Photoshop to be exactly what we need. Uh, what I did yeah. to set for success today, I was on the treadmill by 6 a.m., which yeah. sucked uh, because I haven't been waking up that early because uh, COVID wakes up after the 4.10. Um, no, I'm just kidding. Right. Um, no, but I, I had what made the difference was here's the deal. Because you're working out at home and you're sneaking downstairs, whether it's working out or yoga or stretching or whatever you do for your routine, if you have kids at home or a significant other or anybody else – as soon as we go downstairs and start making noise, I wake my kids up. And then that right. time that I had to regroup and think goes away. And so what I ended up doing was, all right, I'm going to set my socks out on my desk. I'm going to set my, my gym shorts and shoes and you know, whatever I needed to, to go do that and be able to roll out and be as quiet as possible to get downstairs. And that made all the difference because I was able to rest better because I already knew what my morning looked like up until 10 AM. I had everything planned out had my calendar set up with Jen and, uh, and it happened. It was great. Uh, I did wake up one of my kids a little bit early on accident. Uh, my, how old is she? Seven year old found her way down at like seven in the morning. Cause she heard us, but still like as far as trying to set conditions for my success, that's what I did. It was the night before it wasn't the morning of trying to make a good decision. Cause at six in the morning in bed, I was like, there's no way I'm getting up. So that's, that's Absolutely. what did it for me today. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and, can you imagine if you had to set up all of your preferences within like Photoshop every time you logged on? Oh yeah. Like if it didn't remember. Right. To have oh man, that's a good example. Yeah. Right. That, yeah. that program would suck. And really that's, <laughs> we probably can, cause I'm, I turned 40 this year. We can think back to a time where programs were built that way. They didn't have customization for the, the end user. Right. That wasn't that long ago. Right. Like Apple print shop. I mean, so you remember back before the internet, I do <laughs> dial up AOL, having to well, unplug no, the modem from the, the phone or the, the came around in the sixties. So no, but yes. You remember how, yeah, I know. You remember having to unplug your phone and plug it into the modem so you could connect. I remember being on the very, very, very <laughs> late end of homes that got a second phone line. So right. you wouldn't have to do that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You, you're trying to call people and they got a busy signal. They're like, Oh, you'll have to wait until they get off the internet. 
Yep. Yep. So, all right. So we, we, number one was you talking about uh, yourself. Number two was your relationships. Do you have a number yeah. more points there for number, number two or number three? Well, it's it, relationships that monetize our business. Hmm. And that is, you, you don't see that in an MLM pitch. Uh, and I say this because I just completely messed up some relationships because here I am coming out of the Marine Corps, really lost, uh, really struggling with stress and anxiety and imposter syndrome. And who am I now that I'm not a Marine? Uh, and I got, I got looped into an MLM. Great Let's, products. Real quick for my international students who don't know what that means. Oh, multi-level marketing. Multi-level what is marketing. That? Uh, it exploits the relationships you have so you can present some product from this company and you are their marketing arm. And so you, you sit your friends down. You basically, you're, you're a salesman selling a product right. and you make the money or commissions based business. on your sales, but you're right. also trying to get your friends to sign up because if they sign up with you, then you get a bonus. So not only are you a salesman right. of a product, you're a salesman of people. And they're like, yeah. well, talk to your friends and family first, right? That's MLM kind of in talk a to nutshell. Your friends and family. Yeah. 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 And, and, and it, it's really frustrating because although some of those companies have some really good products, this company that I used had some of the best laundry detergent I, I've ever used, but their process for how to create a relationship to do business with someone. Um, there was more of a get to know you going through some fast food drive through than how these companies teach this relationship building. It's not. It's to feign interest. It's to pretend that you are interested in what that other person is doing so that we can get a sell. And Derek, every time I have focused on the sale instead of service, I am so glad that people told me no. I'm so glad because I don't want to condition that as a habit. I want to, I want to set up the conditions for success by cultivating the relationship, looking to where I can be in service to other people and then saying, Hey, if this is something you're interested in, here we go. Like yeah. you can, you can check out my website. Like I don't even give links. I don't do that anymore. Um, and so when you, when you go in this order every time, it reminds you to focus on the relationship building. And the same thing for like, when you're in the business, you have a team of people that you're either gonna be working with, working for, supervising, leading, managing. And if you if you forget the relationship part, uh, cause I intentionally forgot it uh, while in the military because I was told nothing's personal. And I'm like, nothing's personal? So I can say whatever the hell I wanna say to somebody that's like several time like they outrank me multiple times over because nothing's personal. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you can imagine how well that went. Um, it is personal. It is always personal. It, it means you don't take things that are beyond your control personally. It don't, doesn't mean that if a project fails, that you're a failure as a human being. Like don't take things personally that way, but have that don't, don't lose track of the humanity. You know, that's what, uh, you and I met at a Brendan Burchard conference, uh, and he's a, a college yeah. buddy of mine. And before I left for boot camp, he said something along those lines of, of Paul, don't forget your humanity. Don't lose your humanity. And that really guided me in, in some of the things, uh, after I was like, just communicating with reckless abandon of it's not personal. Okay. <laughs> game on. <laughs> Right. There was aspects of really remembering that and, and working with my Marines and working with teams to do some stuff that hasn't happened in like a few generations. Uh, and I'm really proud of that. So when you, when you go through that process of what am I doing to show up the best that I can, because if I do that, that sets the conditions for me to set this relationship up for the best that it can be. And when I have relationships that monetize, we call that business, but because I've taken care of myself, because I'm committing to uh, being a good person and being a good contributor to the relationship, then my business is just going to take off. And then what happens? 
this common concern and, and maybe somebody that's watching today, let me know if this is you. These two words that we've heard several times in, in doing these lives, imposter syndrome. It's, it's, it's when you either lose faith in your abilities and, and what you've accomplished and what you can contribute, or you're in this business mindset that is, is inverted of you're trying to do business first and then create relationships. And then if there's any time left over, take care of yourself. I, I When I have felt the, the greatest amount of imposter syndrome, it's because I'm completely inverted. And so when I take the time to write that order, kind of like uh, we were talking last night, like I'm gonna get these pieces done and then I'm out. I will talk with you tomorrow because uh, I'm gonna go to bed on time because I've got a yeah. full day tomorrow. We've got Moto Monday, you know? <laughs> that is that discipline to create that structure, kind of like going back to the, 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 the bridge metaphor, to create the structure to build that bridge from where you're at to where you want to be. Uh, that takes time and it's a lot more than what you'll, you can look around and see for, you know, get rich quick. I, I made $10 million in 18 months. Yeah, I, I'm sure you did, but I'm, I'm very confident. There was a lot more work that took place ahead of your timer that when you hit start on the timer that you're not giving credit to yourself for, and it's not coming through in your marketing message. Yeah. Uh, so let me just take a drink of water with that. Yeah. <laughs> Take a drink of water. Yeah, no, I think I think this is really good. And there's been a lot of really good points so far on this. And I think what I'm the most excited about is, you know, as an artist, we can we can kind of be all over the place. And it's so easy to get hung up on the fact that most of what we do is so sub, or so you have objective and subjective. You have the well, what is a client like? Not because it's what a customer wants, but it's just what they like, what color do they like or whatever. And so taking an art that is so subjective and turning it into something that is rinse and repeat repeatable to make it something that we can do and find success continually. So going through these steps, building up yourself and your relationships was number two. What was number three? Did we get into number three yet? Uh, number three is the business relationships the business. That monetize is what we call business. And if it's not oh, okay. a business that you have, like your career, or your mission. Yeah. Self. Good relationship, business in that order every time is what's going to set you up for success. And that doesn't mean that that's the prior to prioritization of your work always. Uh, but if, uh, hold on, if you go through those steps every single time and you come into this, oh my gosh, we weren't prepared for this. We need to surge a little bit. Well, then your personal relationships have like a savings account from which to draw from. I was just going like, to talk hey, about that. Right. I was, I, well, uh, I was just going to say the best example I've heard of that has really stuck with me that is, is in relationships. It's like a bank account. If you haven't made a deposit into that account, you can't withdraw funds. You can't go to the bank and say, Hey, give me a hundred dollars. If you don't have a hundred dollars in your bank account, uh, right. if it doesn't exist, you know, at that point, now you're going in debt if you're pulling from a credit card or something, and then that's worse. Right. So think about a relationship. I can't, you know, as an example, go to my wife and say, Hey, uh, I want to, you know, go out with a buddy and do this, whatever, if she's already been on all day for the kids and I haven't deposited in advance into that relationship in a way that's like, Hey, you know, I was able to, to take care of the kids for a while and she's had that moment to, to take care of herself. Right. And now she's more than happy to be like, yeah, babe, go do whatever you want to do. I got this. You know, if, if it's just constantly pulling, like, well, I'm just going to go do what I want. Right. At some point you're going to, you're going to go bankrupt in that relationship. It's one. so true. Yeah. It's so true. And, and the same thing applies to you. If you're showing up to your account, your savings account, like give me a hundred bucks and it's not in there. You right. know, I didn't think credit cards. I thought that that's a stick up. If you go into the bank and you're like, give me a hundred bucks. You're like, sir, you don't have a hundred dollars in your account. Yeah. Give yeah. me a hundred bucks. Oh, that's uh, called robbery. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> right. Good. Yeah. And yet how many times are we robbing of ourselves and our relationships because we're inverted? Yep. So when you go through that process every time, uh, there is that possibility of we could not have planned for, you know, we're, we're a major company and we're about to have some layoffs. I, I would hope that a, a wise and humane manager would be working some extra time 
to really think about how are we going to lay people off and reorganize the business with excellence? Because there's one way of just like sending them a telegram of you're fired. Uh, and then there's another of, hey, we're going, I, uh, I don't have the guy's name right now, but he's a CEO uh, and he has gone without a paycheck since March. Grant, oh, Grant Cardone was one of them. Uh, he really? did that for a while. Yeah, but that was that was back. I think that was like two He's like, I'm going bankrupt. And I'm like, no, you're not. This is marketing. Brand. No, like, I'm talking like back in 2008 or whenever it was, maybe even after that. But there was a point when was he, it? Was, he was paying everybody else, but not himself. Yeah. 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 There's a CEO right now that's had some really great stuff on, on LinkedIn uh, where he, he is going without a paycheck. Uh, and I'm not saying like if you're in charge, like that's that's the the the, the right direction. But I think that that awareness of uh, leading to managing systems is just profound. And he, he probably has multiple streams of income. So when he's saying he's going without a paycheck, that doesn't necessarily mean he's going without income. Right. Um, so when you, when you go through those steps and then it's time to surge, like both you and I were surging uh, at New Year's. Uh, I had a live cast. And as I was preparing in the final moments of preparation, I saw there was a gap in some of the points that I wanted to teach. And I'm like, I, I, if I present what I have right now, I think I'm going to lose people. Okay. Well, what is it going to take to fix this? And then it was like another eight hours of work. <laughs> oh man. And I'm like, ah, uh, okay. Okay. Uh, I didn't drink coffee. <laughs> I, I got it done. I stayed up till midnight, delivered the live training the next morning or got up early the next morning to then redo the workbook, uh, delivered the training, but then in circling back to take care of myself, I passed out for like three hours and then I took care of myself and that the rest of the day, you know, we had just kind of communicated back and forth lightly, uh, on, on, on New Year's. Uh, but a lot of it was just, I'm out, I'm off of work. I'm off of a lot of this stuff mm -hmm. because I'm taking time to that personal foundation. Right. And I like to think of this as like a house, man, like, or like the footings of that bridge. Uh, if we go with the house, like that personal foundation is that cement slab. Yep. And when you focus on building a strong personal foundation, then that can support your relationships that can support what you're doing in your business. But when you start detracting from your personal foundation, because you consistently sacrifice your sleep, you consistently are being a sluggo and not getting out sweaty uh, and, and, and like burning off the extra calories. If you're consistently eating the fast food, even though it's more delicious, like, yep, I get it. I get it. Kale is, yep, it's it's rough and it, it's, it's a good thing for you. Uh, and if you're consistently, you know, I, I look at uh, my alcoholism where I was doing between 12 and 16 ounces of bourbon whiskey, uh, not even at my peak, um, injecting that into my body, uh, consuming that it was absolutely destroying my personal foundation. And I was able to keep up appearances at work for a little while and I was able to keep some relationships. But if you don't hold true and like really strengthen that personal foundation, yeah. It's just a matter of time before all of those other things just crumble. And when it comes crashing down, boy, yeah. it's like one of those old casinos in Vegas. It's just like, this <laughs> is going to make a mess. <laughs> right? Yeah, that's so good. Um, so many good takeaways. And I think something else. So, you know, at the beginning, I talked about how I deleted Instagram and Facebook from my phone. Uh, to reduce yeah. that temptation. And you're talking about, and obviously this has been a while now for you, but, but, re well, I guess I was saying alcohol when I said that, but, but caffeine, yeah. even coffee is within the last couple of weeks for you. And so uh, even caffe that change. A couple weeks. Yeah. Booze has been uh, a few years. Uh, tobacco, smokeless and smoking tobacco. Um, that's been a few years now. Um, yeah. Uh, I still ebb and flow with video games. Uh, I've limited myself to chess uh, at this point because I'm that kind of a nerd. I read a great article about how if you're a CEO uh, and you don't know how to play chess, you're doing your business and your customers a disservice. Huh. Um, yeah. Where'd you hear that? Yeah. Uh, I, I 
probably paraphrasing the article terribly, but it was, I, I saw this article on LinkedIn and I'm like, Hey, Chester. Yay, how, how <laughs> yeah. So oh, I, that's, that's where I, I, I want to emphasize to people. And if you have questions on this stuff, please type them in. Uh, cause one of the things Derek and I love to do is like, if we have a course written around your question, we get to answer your question live here on Moto Monday, but then also be like here, have this course that can help you out a little bit more too. So please put your questions. I've got uh, Behance up on me and I've got the, I can see the chat roll here and, and you've got mission Good. control and you can see it all. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, and it's a little choppy. Mission control is making me nervous right now. Everything's a little oh, glitchy. Oh gosh. We've been on, well, we've, it's almost time. Good. We're, like, we're in our final really minutes well. here. I think we're going to make it to the end, but just barely. Yeah. Um, yeah. That, that new M1 processor Mac is looking uh, tempting. Looking more and more. <laughs> yeah, that might happen. I don't know. I'm trying to hold off for the for the MacBook Pro with the M1 yeah. processor, but I might. I was watching. On, sorry, total squirrel moment. I I geek out with tech, well, but I'm yeah. I'm tempted. I was watching a review on YouTube and the new Mac Mini. Yeah, the Mac Minis, the little boxes, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. The processing on those. Some of the some of the uh, influencers and YouTubers were very impressed with how I was able to keep up for like 700 bucks. It's crazy. So we'll, we'll see what? if you guys are looking for a new computer. That might be one you consider. The only problem is it's not portable. It doesn't have a battery. You need a screen, all that stuff. It's not a laptop. It's just a little yeah. computer desktop, but right. It makes sense. Yeah. That, that might be on my, my wish list. So these streams can make it to the end without melting. It's true. It's true. <laughs> you know, and we were talking about the confidence piece. And so how do you, how do you create some more confidence in the moment? Like yeah. as you are in this new year, as you are going to push yourself, as you are going to leave imposter syndrome as a thing that you have struggled with and you now have these tools for how to move through. Here's, here's what I'd say. Well, well, I love looking at the history of language. Uh, language is the oldest tool in humanity. It's what has allowed us compared to all other species to compound our knowledge from one generation to the next. And the only thing like that was more prolific than the, the spoken word was the written word. And then how we've gone to the digitized word. It's just like, whoa. Uh, so when we take a look at the history of language, we get to take a glimpse at the, the wisdom of our ancestors for what they meant with the word. And confidence is built from the Latin and it can get broken down into con. Um, and the, its original root would be com. And then fidence is from fidere, uh, and we hear like fidelity. So mm -hmm. that means with trust. And when you create trust in yourself, you can start off by saying, you know what? I am not going to look at this electronic leash for the next 10 minutes. I'm not going to play video games. I'm not going to be on Instagram until noon. Um, and then you go do it, especially as a creative. Think back to when you were a kid, like that drawing that you made or that musical piece that you performed. And as a very young kid, and if you've got young kids, you're going to hear this frequently. Look, mommy, I did it. Look, daddy, look, Nana, look, Papa. I, I've heard I, I the did it. <laughs> I've heard that, hey, mom, right. watch this is the equivalent to a guy saying, hey, hold my beer. Hey, hold my beer. Right, <laughs> Something's right. about to go down. Oh, what are you doing? Who's jumping off of right. what? <laughs> yeah. Right. That desire. Oh, yeah. This high state of esteem, respect, go. love. Oh, did I lose I you a little back. bit? I got so nervous. I was like, crap, the audio went away. It's going to end the oh, stream. No. Yeah. Yeah. But you're back. It sounds like your audio changed feeds uh, to did possibly it? your laptop again. Yeah, I think okay. so. Oh, it did. It did. Man. All right. All right. Nice microphone. So you can tell the difference. Anytime <laughs> you can tell, you can tell the difference. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, um, so that, that, create that confidence. Where did, where did you lose me then? I don't really know. But hey, we are at your one hour mark, though. I know you've got some other client stuff, too. Yeah. So um, yeah, yeah. What, what parting thoughts, any, any final thoughts yep. here before we totally cut stream? Absolutely. To create that trust, to have more confidence, to move away from imposter syndrome, 
you build that trust by doing things for you. Because unlike that child or their version of you, where you may have sought out external validation, you now as an adult, as a person who is more mature, recognizes that you can set down the standards to see yourself as, as, as valid. So you have that internal validation. When you develop that trust with yourself, then you can develop greater trust in your relationships and in your business. So good. <laughs> so good. Um, thank you so much, Paul, for your time, for, for jumping in and for sharing with our students. I love this. Uh, if yeah. anybody wants to learn more about you, where do they go? Uh, you can go to paulgowan.com. And then if you want to take a look at increasing your confidence, uh, I, I still have that link set up. I'm going to just leave it up there. Okay. Yeah. Uh, awesome. Paulgowan.com slash graphic design will give you an exclusive offer for uh, take command of confidence. And it walks you through do these steps. Uh, and I love offering that kind of a discount to your yeah. students. Awesome. Thank you so much. I'm going to cut this stream a little short. Uh, just because I feel like I'm on thin ice before it falls off anyway. So guys, thank you so much for staying tuned to all of this. Uh, Paul, I'll catch up with you in a minute. And guys, uh, we're going to be doing this for all of January at noon on Monday. So tune in, uh, bring your questions, show off your portfolios. What are you working on? We'd love to help you out. Love to see what you've got going on and uh, love building this community where we can help each other out and stay in touch. Uh, Paul, again, thank you. Thank you so much, everybody. Have yeah. an awesome Monday. Um, I think that's everything. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. All right. All right, guys. We'll Great catch show. you later. See ya. All right, guys, thanks for watching today. I uh, hope you learned a lot of valuable information and I appreciate you sticking around to the very end. But before you go, just a couple things I wanna remind you. The first is if you haven't already, feel free to like this video if you can, depending on where you're watching from, give it a thumbs up or subscribe or tap the bell or give it a follow if you can. And uh, also maybe even just copy the link up in the browser and share it with a friend or post it to your Facebook page. I'd really appreciate that. Uh, but again, just wanna say thanks for with them as soon as I can, if I can, when I see them. So if it's live, I'll try and answer you right away. If this is a replay, you can still comment on the video and uh, I go back and I read those. So I just wanted to say thanks again for watching and let me know what you're working on. I'd love to help you out and hopefully we will see you in the next live. And to be sure you don't miss it, like, like the things. All right, guys, thanks for watching. We'll talk to you later.